Italo's Black Talk Radio, and I want to welcome my guest tonight. is is uh, a guru, an expert. He's a he's a mastery of self self mastery radio host. Robbie Cornelius is on the line. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having. Me. And I forget to ask where where are you coming from because I always forget. Is is it Atlanta or? I'm uh I'm north of Georgia. I'm in north the northern part of Georgia. Oh okay. Okay. So I, yeah, I'm, I I'm definitely somewhere. past Atlanta area. Oh okay. Cool, cool. And yeah, we were actually talking about, you know, if you if you've been to LA and I actually I've been to Georgia. I've been to Atlanta, Georgia, and then I went to Macon for a wedding. <clears throat> okay. And damn it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <where> you are. <laughs> I guess well, it's hot you, everywhere. You know, it is hot. It is hot everywhere. Uh, you know, I just moved up this way. I'm I'm originally from southern Georgia, like deep south, and so mm. this that I feel now up here in the north, north, it's it's way better than it is down south. I mean, in in southern southern Georgia, it's it's like sticky smothering hot mm -hmm. i mean it's just it's brutal yeah <laughs> yeah it's, yeah I mean, it is it's, and it's so loud you know at night i, I was not used, I, never, I, mean, I, I could never get used to the um the crickets or whatever that sounds uh, it's not really a cricket it's <laughs> some some else i'm like It sounds like the, the Walking Dead, you know, like there's a zombie about to come out, out of the woods. Uh, <laughs> like, I feel like in the movies. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, anyways, I, just, I forget about I forget about the fact that like like it's normal to me, but I forget that not every place is the same, you know. Uh, so yeah, it would probably sound like that to me too if I was from somewhere else. Like, what in the world is that? Right. I'm like, what is this sound? <laughs> But anyhow, yeah, I do indeed. want to get right. I do want to start on your podcast because um, I've been listening to your podcast. Actually, I was I was preparing. I was listening to a few of your. I've not been listening to your podcast before, but I just want to have a refresh refresher. And I have a lot of notes here, but uh, I don't want to <laughs> overwhelm the audience. I don't know who Robbie Cornelius is. If you can tell the audience what is self mastery radio and then we can go we can go from there. Well thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. And uh so self mastery radio started back in 2012 and it started at a pivotal moment in my life when I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Up until that point, I lived with what I call the mindset of a victim. And what I mean by that is the series of events that had occurred in my life that led me up until that point was just a bulletin board of negativity. And, you know, from, from me having a, a near-death experience at the age of seven, being involved in a car accident, from me coming up in a household that was very unstable, uh, very mm -hmm. violent, uh, very, my, you know, my father was a very, very violent man when he would drink. Um, you know, I saw my uncle get killed when I was only five years old, you know, right in front of me being, he was shot. Uh, either 12 or 16 times, my memory kind of fades me, but uh, I saw that, um, saw a lot of family violence. My mother was beat, uh, you know, religiously 
until I was about mm. 15 years old. And uh, so I operated with that mindset of the world was against me. I thought I was set up mm. to fail. And so fast forward from my dad passed away at uh, when I was 16. He passed away on his birthday. And at the age of 16, I came home from school one day and made a conscious choice to be a gangbanger, a conscious choice. And this is where the victim mentality aspect of my show comes into play because when my fa- when we buried my father, I realized that I had all the ingredients needed to be a real gangster. I, I had I had grew up very hard. My you know, I had a I had a brush with death. I'd seen death, I'd seen violence all my life. We were poor and we, we grew up in the hood and so several hoods because we were always moving around. But uh I was like, man, I got the recipe. And at the moment, at that moment, I knew that I didn't have to be a a gang member. I didn't have to be a gangster. I made that conscious choice. But Mm. the day I made that choice, I I fell into a deep sense of what I call uh, victim hypnosis. I lived that life. I became the character that I decided to become. And I became that character so well that I I thought that's who I was as an individual. I thought I was this mean, tough street guy. You say something to me, I'm coming at you, and it don't matter who is in the way. And uh, so, you know, my what what but what really happened is my anger or my my fear uh, transformed into anger. And so I lived like that from the age of sixteen to the age of 27, uh, not, not necessarily violent, um, but, you know, definitely live with that victim mentality. I started to change around 22, 21 or 22. When I got a phone call from a police officer one day that told me he was watching the game, he, he was investigating the gang I was rolling with. He told me straight up, Hey, we already got one of your guys for murder. We coming to get you and your crew next. We watching you. He says, but there's something about you that lets me that makes me feel like you have a bit brighter future. I was doing music at the time. I was rapping. It was bad rap. It was gangster rap. But at the time, he he had purchased one of my CDs from his brother's tattoo parlor. The uh, police officer had a brother that did tattoos, and my phone number was on that CD. So that's how he got my number. But he called me. He told me he saw something better in me. And he said, I highly suggest you leave those guys alone that you're rolling with or where you're going down with them. He said, I've already told everybody at the police department that I think you're a good kid that's running with a bad crowd. He says, everybody here thinks I'm wrong. They think you're just another gangbanger. He says, but I see something different. I heard your music. Although it's you know bad, you got some really good talent. I suggest you do that. When I hung off the phone with him that, that morning, that Sunday morning, I looked around. I was sleeping at a friend's house, well, some associate's house who was involved in illegal activity. And I left there and made a decision never to look back. I just pursued my uh, dreams as becoming a rapper at the time. But even though I I left the street life, I was forced to rap about the harsh realities of my upbringing every single night that I performed my music. And so that was okay for a while, but... In 2011, I started to go through severe depression. I was just empty on the inside. Mm. And so after after coming across an opportunity to sign a record deal, in the middle of me signing a one, in the middle of this record company wanting me to sign a record deal as this gangster rapper, I decided I wanted to change my life for the better. So the music I submitted to the record company was all positive music. And it was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we want, we want what we heard. We want what we heard from you in the beginning. And so from that point on, I just said, I'm done. I, I left the music game alone and uh, I decided to devote time to my happiness. So my last show was, I want to say, uh, October, 2011 in Ogden, Utah was my last show. I, I came back off the road, turned my cell phone off, 
deactivated my Facebook and just decided that I was going to check out from the world because I was tired of playing this role, this character that everybody thought I was, mm-hmm. and they was expecting right. me to continue to play that character. You get stuck in these roles sometimes. Right. And right. I'm like, man, I don't even know what it feels like to be happy. I'm like, for, like honestly, I didn't even know what it felt like to be happy. At the age of, I want to say at the time I was 27, I, I did not know what happiness felt like. I did not know what love felt like. I mean, literally, those emotions were absent in me. And well, uh, you, didn't, you didn't grow up. Uh, you didn't grow up. You didn't have a role model to look up to, right? You didn't have anybody that said, "This is not okay." This is not this, you know, who you're supposed to be at. Nobody had really taught you anything, or did they? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, my mother did. My mother, my mother always, always told us right from wrong. You know, that's why I call it a conscious decision to be a gangbanger and all of this stuff, because my I knew better. I definitely knew better. My mother taught us. You know, she used to say all the time, excuse my language, a hard head make a soft ass. I never knew what that meant. She would always say things like, you reap what you sow. Uh, you know, you're responsible for your yourself. Like, you get yourself in some trouble, it's going to be hard to get out of. Fortunately for me, I never got any, <laughs> I never got in any real trouble. Uh, to this day, I have a clean record. Like, I, I, I could... I could purchase firearm. I can I can go anywhere I want to, any country, because I I never got in trouble. I was one of the lucky ones, and uh, but I but I definitely knew better. And my clear my clear record shows you that I knew better. <laughs> and um, right, right. but I just made that conscious choice. It was fascinating. The music the music that I was listening to at the time fascinated me. I wanted to be the Tupac Shakur. I wanted to be like, uh, I wanted to be like Snoop Doggy Dog. I wanted to be, I wanted to be like these guys, you know, and I had, and what I became keenly aware of, I was like, look, a lot of these guys are rapping about this stuff and they ain't never been through nothing. I didn't been through it all. So if anybody's going to rap about it, it's going to be me, (laughs) you know? So that was my mind at the time. And um, so long story short, 2012, I come home, turn everything off, deactivate my phone and everything. Uh, and uh, I just decided to sit to myself. I was like, I don't even want anybody to know I'm back in town. Because I was kind of like a local celebrity where I'm from. You know, when, when I was in town, mm-hmm. when everybody knew it, they wanted to party. They wanted to hang out. They wanted to. And um, so I just kind of slid back into town, never let anybody know I was back. And I lived like that for about two years without without a cell phone, without Facebook, without anything. Mm. And uh, from 2011 to like 2013. And even if you go back on my Instagram page, you'll see that my first post was around, it was somewhere around 2013. That's when I started getting back online, but my mindset had changed. And so mm. mastery came into the picture where, like one day I realized I had to, I had, I'm an extremist on every level under the sun. So I realized that in order for me to really improve my life, I had to accept full responsibility for everything, the good and the bad. I had to take 100% responsibility for the quality of my life experience, for the quality, because the quality of my life experience was a direct reflection of the results, the choices I'd made in life. And although I had a clean record, I was doing bad. I was broke, didn't have a vehicle. I was depressed, emotionally unavailable. And uh, I just said, I'm going to own it all, man, and I'm going to start with my happiness. I don't want money first. I want happiness first. And so I just started working on my happiness for a year without a dollar in my name, just working on my happiness, like literally waking up in the morning, consciously looking for something to be grateful for. And I had never woke up with those mm-hmm. eyes before. And so that's what mastery is. is. It's just, that's very interesting. it's not a destination. Yeah. It's no. not a destination. <clears throat> no, of course. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a long journey. I, I discovered that too. Like, <clears throat> like what you're 
and you're talking about your the journey you went you went through and I and I haven't been through that same journey but I've been through depression, I've been through anxiety, I've been through uh all that stuff that uh, you described in but and also there are circumstances that are similar to to yours. Like my father was uh addicted to drugs, he was selling my toys, my 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 furniture for drugs. Uh, my mom was basically the, she was always, you know, uh, the victim. Anyways, long story short too, because I don't want to, I want to talk about your mastery that <clears throat> it became a point and actually it took you 27 years. It took me 40. So when I became 40, <clears throat> that's when I realized something is wrong with my mm. mindset. And then I started uh, listening to, I don't know if you know, Louis Hay. Uh, she has this yeah. Book called, uh, yeah, you just lit you can me heal up like your the life. light bulb right there. Yes. Yeah, you can heal your life. I listened to that CD because she says listen to this CD every day for 30 days. I probably listened to it for like a whole year. <laughs> um, <laughs> just just randomly, I was just like, if I if I fell a certain way, <clears throat> you know, she she has such a, such a soothing boy, voice. So for me, it was the voice that caught me. And I didn't know what she was saying half the time. I was like, what is she talking about? Like, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself how, you, how much you love yourself. I'm like, I can't do that, <laughs> you know? But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. and then there, there's different people that I had to uh, walk away from. And that's probably what, what happened to you with the friends that you were hanging around. That's why that, that cop saw something in you. That's really interesting yeah. how he pointed that, that out to you and you... And you listen because many people won't listen to that. That's interesting. Yes, yes, that was a, a very pivotal moment in my life uh, when, right, when I got that phone call that morning. So fast forward to today, like what <clears throat> did you? So you you visualize what was going to happen to you, and at this point, I'm sure you're not nowhere where you want to be, or maybe you are. <clears throat> because I've seen you on TikTok, and I, I just happened to <clears throat> to see your com- the people are commenting in your in your lives, um, and I'm like, okay, I'll listen because you know I usually scroll, and some people really have nothing to say or nothing to to be doing on live, and I'm like, okay, are you promoting something? You're selling me. They were actually asking you the same question. I'm like, that's interesting. What are you selling me? You know, they were <laughs> asking you that. I'm like, he's not selling you anything. That's interesting how people, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, it's <laughs> it is strange. It is strange. It, you like, know, we live in a world talking. now where, like, yeah, just talking. That's it. That's it. W- wanting right. to connect with people that are like minded. Right. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I mean, you 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 do talk about some things that many people won't agree with. But um, at the same time, yes. you're respectful. Uh, you know, you you explain as to why you arrived to that conclusion. Uh, there are many quotes that I I, I wrote here. Uh, for instance, uh, you wrote something about laughing yourself to sleep versus instead of crying yourself to sleep, which many people do. You know, that's one thing that you. It's it's like a bumper sticker to me, like these things that you're yeah. saying, and it's probably. It's probably coming out of your meditation because uh, those those thoughts come to you. Um, is that how you do it? Is when you're meditating or when you're just talking? Yeah. So a lot of, I mean, I would say ninety 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 five percent of anything I record, I I record it right after I come out of meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether it's a podcast or whether it's a video for TikTok, it's me coming out of meditation or me or in, in the other 5% is something that might have just happened in my life that I learned from. And I decided to share that lesson with somebody. And uh, that's how I've been doing my life ever since, which is why I've been podcasting so long because it's all, it's all organic. Like these are things <laughs> Yeah, it's like I can never run out yeah, of material, I'm right? Because you keep living. <laughs> and I'm laughing because uh, I, 
I was I was making a joke one day with you because uh, every time I went on TikTok, you were on the live, and I'm like, okay, you're still on. And so and then later at that night, I went on and actually I caught you again. I'm like, hold on a second, you've been all day on t- on on live, okay? Are you still on, dude? <laughs> but it was just a joke. Um, <laughs> but it was just funny. Like he's on every day, you no. Know. But uh, yeah, and I and, and but you do have content. Like I, that's what I was saying to another guy earlier, Calvin, um, another TikToker. Uh, earlier, I was telling him like, at least we have content. Like there's there's a conscious decision as to why you're going live. You're just not, yeah, you know, going there expecting something from people. You're 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 have a message. You have something to say. You're engaging with the audience. And so, yeah. yeah, people that don't follow you, they should talk. It's basically Self Mastery Radio on TikTok and Instagram, but you're mostly on TikTok, I think. Um, yes. Right? Yes, and, sir. Yeah, there's, yeah. Also, there's also your website, which is uh, you have a book, or I don't know if you have one or two books different, but there's one book here. What is the – it says here, read, read this if you're – Tired of Being Broke or Robbie Contrary. Yes. So, That's me. correct. <laughs> yeah, that. so I have I have several books that I've written. Um, people get mad at me because I never really promote them. You know, I always just, I, I'm an organic type of person. I just, I want people to stumble across my stuff when they're ready for it. And the reason why I do it like that is because you know, I actually, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I actually own a real business. You know, I have a software development company, so that's my primary source of income. And uh, okay. the reason why I don't promote my books or nothing because I don't have to live off of it. You know, it's just uh, these mm, are okay. these are like so these are these are things that life inspires me to write about. And I write it, I put it out there, and when people stumble across it, they're like, man, I didn't know you wrote a book. You know, I got people now. Here's how I am. I have people that I've been friends with for 15, 20 years. They never knew I wrote a book (laughs) because I I don't talk about it. You know, they, you know, I only, I, I only talk about things when it's necessary. And so, um, but yes, I do have those books out there, um, a lot more out there than I'm actually displaying because I write up under different names as well. If I want to, if I want to put some content out there that I don't want my name really associated with, because I, you know, I want my (laughs) brand to be associated with a certain thing, I'll put, I'll put other content out there as well. So that's the cool thing about writing books. I highly suggest anybody who start. Like everybody should write books, in my opinion, and I'm very mindful of saying the word "should," but books can relieve a lot of stress in your life if you are able to write. Yeah, yeah, actually, well, I, I recommend it too. I, I I write myself uh, poetry, so I have a lot of uh, poetry scattered everywhere. But yeah, I do have also, and I made it a point to one day publish a book. I didn't publish it. My partner did, and I was I was so surprised because I was like, I said I was gonna do it, and you did it, and so that that was like okay, that shows you how people that I have around me around me, they were like, yeah, you should do it, yeah, yeah, go ahead, you should do it, and somebody to somebody to believe in you and to believe in my in my work, and basically pushed me to publish it. And I, yeah, you know, I, I will do it again in a heartbeat. But yeah, it's it's hard to uh, promote yourself. It's not, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to do that because uh, I hate promoting myself as well. Um, I feel like it's kind of like okay, it's kind of forced. It's not organic. Like you're right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For those that are listening, you do want to check out selfmasteryradio.com. Uh, but anyways, um, let's talk about some else because we're not near near done here because I do under, I do want to talk to you about different things that I listen to on your podcast that are interesting to me. 
Um, okay. There was actually something that you were talking about, visualization, and I didn't understand it also uh, until I thought about I thought about it myself, like how, how did I visualize something that, that became reality? And that just happened recently too with a, a purchase, um, a cabin. And um, anyways, I, I made it into a point to make it a business. And what would that look like? In my head, I was picturing, the first thing I was picturing is board games. It's interesting. Oh. So my mind was like, okay, let's just get some board games and I want to get some whatever, toys or, you know, if I have kids. So I basically, I envisioned this in my head um, and then I got it. And so, but it took, a, it took a lot of effort to, you know, to go into that. And I don't know if I'm, if I'm explaining that correctly, but I basically, yes, it in my head. what would that look like in real time? And what, what would I, yeah. you know, do I, do I need two bedrooms? Do I need only one bedroom? Do I need a nice jacuzzi? What do I need? And so once I, yeah. and then there, there were some people that are saying, don't get a jacuzzi. What do you want to get a jacuzzi? What do you have to do this? What do you have to do that? There were people that are my friends or my my family. They were like, you don't need to do that. Uh, and I'm like, no, I do. Because in my head, that's what I thought. Why, how dare yeah. you, you know, say how it should be when it's in my head already. And my partner was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. you want to do this? Let me put it on Photoshop. I'm going to make it look nice. It's going to look like this when it's all painted. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want. I don't want it to be like they say, uh, you know, all white yeah. you know, or whatever. I'm like, no, I want it to be cozy. So that, and I understood. I'm like, okay, that's visualization. Um, and I'm sure you did that too Absolutely. with your, you know, self-mastery radio and all that. Yeah, so visualization has been very powerful in my life. Uh, and I realized that I'd been doing it even back when I was doing music. I used to I used to come home from school and lock myself in my room, and I would imagine myself performing in front of large crowds. And mm. I didn't know anything about visualization <laughs> then. I just, they just called it imagination, you know? And, um, and that ended up becoming true for me. I was like, whoa. So I didn't know anything about it, like, consciously until I came across the movie The Secret back in 2012. That right. movie single-handedly played a major role in me changing my life because they, they, they put a, a face to this thing I had been doing. You know, they talked about visualization. They talked about putting out good vibes and attracting things to you. And, uh, you know, that led me to studying every single person in that documentary in great detail. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And what I, what I realized is that like after, a, like after two years of like trying to use the law of attraction and for, I don't know, are you familiar with the law of attraction too? Yeah. Yeah. So, so after like two years of trying to use the law of attraction, um, nothing had really changed for me. And I realized it was because I was focusing on attracting things outside of myself. And I realized that I, I came across this, this idea that one day in meditation, it was like clear as day to me. It was like, instead of trying to attract things to you, become the life you want to experience instead. Like you become the thing you want to attract because life is kind of like a, a, a mirror. It's a reflection of who we are. And so that's what I did. It made me say, oh, my God, I got to become this. I have to become successful in my mind and in my heart right now when I don't have two pennies to rub together. Like right now I have to not – not necessarily fake it till you make it until, you know, to where you're trying to prove to people that you're, you're doing something that you're not, but like become that person in character that would have the thing that you wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And so what that meant was I got to work on my personality. I got to make sure that when I go out, I feel good about myself and that's going to take me working on myself behind closed doors, you know, doing the mirror work, like you said, visualizing myself as the person I want to be, you know, mm -hmm. 
and just working, like right. owning that vision, you know. And so, yeah, visualization has been very impactful for me. I use it yeah. every day. Yeah, and it's uh, affirmations as well. I was doing that, and but actually, I like to personalize, personalize because I was doing the meditation, um, listening to uh, audio books and stuff. But I, I, at one point, I was like, okay, that's fine, that's that's great. You know, I, I like what they're saying, <clears throat> and they're masters at it. You know, they're masters of what they what they were doing, uh, pioneers, some of them. But I'm like, well, what? what is it specifically for me? Because you can't really take a blanket statement or you cannot take a, um, uh, you know, a sticker that you see on, on a bumper sticker. And then that's not your motto. That's not you. Right. So you have to that's basically right. tailor it to your, to your personality or to your own work. Yes. And that's what I had to do. And I'm like, no, make it your own. And I, 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 I started writing a lot and, <clears throat> yeah, when you see yourself in the mirror and you see the, your flaws and you are fine with the flaws and you're, because the flaws are basically making you perfect as well. And so you start loving yourself. Like I, I used to hate, I used to hate editing my, um, my uh, podcast, hate it. Yeah. I didn't like my accent. I didn't like what I sounded like. I, I, I hated what I was saying. I was like, oh, my God, you can just shut up and let him talk, right? But then I started la- listening to myself. I'm like, wait a minute. You are right. Why don't you speak up? It's your own show. And so I started like, right. liking, liking it. I'm like, like you, I can tell that you love it because you enjoy talking, and then you, you actually are speaking from your truth. And so that comes through, and people relate, and people can be like, wow, that right there, uh, whether they agree or not, hey, he's he's saying something that I I should listen to, right? Yes, yeah, and I think you have a wonderful voice, by the way. I think you have a voice <laughs> for podcasting. I mean, it's amazing. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I will take the compliment. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, so so do you. I mean, you have yeah. And, and somebody said to me, like, Victor, uh, you know what, it's, it is about positivity. When you are, when you're passionate about something and you do it with passion, you do it with such umph, you know, you put it, a, you put so much effort into what you're doing, it comes across and, and people can relate. And that's, you know, being positive is about loving what you do, you know. And I, I hated what I was doing back in the days. I was doing customer service. Um, you know, for 24 years, I hated it. I hated myself. Like, I was like, what am I doing? I'm what I'm trying to sell here. Mm. I don't even trust my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't believing in the product I was selling. Um, That's right. I just felt so fake. I'm like, this is fake. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? Anyways. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a you long journey. Believe, yeah, I'm still it's, not where, I'm still halfway there, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, this believing in what you're selling, whether it, no matter what it is, if it's furniture or if it's, uh, you know, a vision for life, you you believe, you know, believing it is is the like you can sell me on anything that you say you really believe in this. Oh, belief is a strong word, and uh, you know, I I I just think that a lot of people when they don't have something to believe in, they become lost a lot of times. You know, they don't know what to do with themselves. You know, I think I think that's what happens with, with people like my father who my father didn't have a he didn't he didn't believe in anything. Like he didn't he he didn't have anything that inspired him to wake up every day and give it his all. You know he 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 didn't. You know so I you know and I don't know where I don't know why I don't know why some people have that blank canvas, but I do know that when you have something that you believe in, you can cause other people to believe in it as well. You oh, can yeah. inspire people with a vision. You know, definitely. 
I mean, ne- yeah, negative, neg- negatively and positively, positively too. And positively, um, I said that right. yeah, yeah. You can be, <laughs> you can, you can, you know, you can make you make me believe that I'm worthless, and at the same time, you can make me believe that I'm worth something. So in the, it goes both Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, there's been people in my life that have, you know, <laughs> I, I've had both, you know, and unfortunately, you listen to the people that negative people sometimes you, you listen to the negativity first like when i i did yeah. my uh, theater show here and i i was uh, you know it was a great show and everything but i i never paid attention to the good reviews i'm like what's that one review that why didn't they like it <laughs> <And I was laughs> like, and it's like why everybody was like why you care it's only one person out of 20 out of 30, you know, <laughs> so I'm like, why doesn't he like it? <laughs> but it bothers you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it like I did my you. best. Why don't you like this thing? You know, it, well, it, it's like yeah. being, it's like being on TikTok live or, you know, uh, you know, it's, that's why, I, that's why I started doing it because 90, I'll say 90, 99% of the interaction I get on TikTok is very positive. Um, and sometimes when you're trying to address somebody, let's say somebody comments negative on one of your posts, right? You'll, you'll ignore all the positives and go to that negative yeah. person just to address that person. <laughs> so, so the reason I started going on live as well, so I can like, hold up, there's a lot of positive people here. Like, let me talk to them. Because that's what's happening in the world. If you realize right now, in the world, a lot of times the negativity becomes louder than the positivity. Mm-hmm. You know, the media highlights mm-hmm. the negative. When you when yeah. you go on social media, it's highlighting the negative. And let me tell you what people have mm-hmm. done. In the midst of highlighting the negative, they start to demonize the positive. So, for instance, mm-hmm. I remember. Um, I remember a few years ago, about a year ago, I didn't really, I didn't really want to do it this way, but the reason why it was done this way, I could understand. I, I, I could get behind. So a year ago, a, a, friend, a friend of mine, he wanted to, he wanted to go to random restaurants and seek out uh, just people who were doing their job and tip them a hundred dollars every single time. And and he would he would record it. He wanted to record it and he wanted to wow. share it on social media so that it inspired mm. other people to to do the same thing for people yeah. when they go out to eat or wherever they are. So the I so one night I mean so one day for lunch we we went as a group and uh it was about maybe 10 of us in a group and we ended up all together, we ended up tipping this lady $600. She was just, she was overwhelmed with joy. It was phenomenal. So I'm like, this is going to be great. I'm going to share this on social media to inspire people to share, you know, to tip more. <laughs> Sometimes waitresses right. and waiters don't make a lot of money. When I yeah. uploaded that video, do you know how many people criticized us for doing that. Well, Mm. if you really meant it, you shouldn't have recorded it. Well, if you really meant it, you shouldn't have did this and that. You shouldn't have recorded it. Why did you record it? And I'm like, wow. Even when you're doing something good, people will find a negative. You can backfire. Exactly. So it's like, wow. So here's the deal. If I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have recorded that and put it out there, how would you ever come across? Because we're influenced by the content we consume. So should I just allow negative content to overpopulate the Internet, or should I do my part in doing what I feel like is good? And that's the world right now. Like, critics are winning now. (laughs) Like, critics, people who sit on the sidelines and judge other people, have the loudest voice sometimes. So my mission with Self Mastery mm-hmm. Radio is to make positivity louder, to 
to make happiness louder, to make success louder. And whether I got to get on TikTok or any other platform 20 times a day to make sure that every time I see violence being displayed in the media, that I'm trying to do my little part by offsetting that that negativity by right. going on there like, okay, right. I just saw I just saw in Chicago mm-hmm. where like X amount of people got killed, okay? I'm in this world and I feel partly to blame for it, you know, because we all contribute contribute consciously and unconsciously, the ripple effect. So I'm like, okay, uh, mm-hmm. X amount of people just got killed in Chicago. Oh, I got to go on live right now because somebody just mm-hmm. felt the – somebody somewhere in the world that's following me knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody mm-hmm. that probably was affected <laughs> yeah. by that. And right. maybe that person that's the end result of that emotion will get on my live and I can help them mm-hmm. feel better. That's how I'm thinking when right. I go on live. And so that's my mission. So TikTok is a great platform to do it on. And my podcast oh, yeah. uh been downloaded Amazing. now since. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, even no, with I mean, that, it's, not, uh, not every, some of the best content I've seen uh, in, in TikTok. Hey, thank you. That's a, that's a compliment, man. I, I'm just trying to, I just want to be human. And I want when, I want when I, when I leave this earth at a very old age, hopefully, uh, that I can live in, in, in transition empty. Like I've given it my all. I gave it my all. This is it. And, uh, right. That's my mission. I want people to say, man, the world might be negative, but I know there's one dude, Robbie Cornelius, boy, he, he, you know, (laughs) I can just go turn on his content and it's going to make me get out of that mindset that I'm in. You're accomplishing that every day. I mean, I, I've seen you uh, turn people around to your podcast. And anyways, I, I do have to wrap it up. However, because we have like a couple of mi- couple of minutes left uh, in the show. Sorry, I didn't tell you, but it's 45 minutes. But I do <laughs> okay, I do you. want to recommend I do want to recommend everybody who's listening to please. Click below because I'm going to put all your information below, your TikTok, your Instagram, your everything below. And then from there, it'll take you to their page. And, and people that don't want to go into TikTok for fear for fear of uh, China spying on you or whatever, like Robbie <laughs> says, everybody is spying on you any damn way. You may as well do it. <laughs> it's fun. Um, but anyways, I want to yeah. give you the last word. Anything you want to say, any shout outs or anything like that before I we wrap it up today. Thank you. So thank you for allowing me to come on again. Uh to the listener, don't be fooled by the illusion of chaos that you see being promoted in the media, in the news, when you're on social media. Don't be don't be fooled to think that the world is going to the bad because I'm a firm believer that things are actually getting better on a grand scale. You just have to look harder for it sometimes. Don't make, don't let, don't allow the media to make you start hating people that appear to be different than you. Give people the freedom to be who they are, love and respect them and help them see the good in themselves because people are only destructive when they don't believe they have anything valuable to bring to the table. People who are solution oriented, are trying to lift people up. So no matter who you are, where you are right now, you can definitely turn your life around. All you got to do is make that choice and then commit to it. So don't let this world turn your heart cold. No matter who's hurt you, no matter what you see, you know, just deal with people on a human-to-human basis instead of putting a blanket statement on certain type of people. So that's my message. Hey, you heard it from the self master, uh, Robbie, Robbie Cornelius. Thank you so much for at least for to, for calling today. And uh, as again, as I always say, you sure didn't see this coming, guys. We are go for liftoff in T minus thirty. Hit the record.
didn't see that coming. Thank you.